Right, we're up and ready, John. And today okay, we're going to do 1987 and 1988. Okay. Your 21st anniversary, 21st, yeah, 21st anniversary from 66 yeah. to 87. Amazing, eh? I still remember the first gig. Well, yeah, the first one was the four of us was that one. We did a talkie when Johnny arranged to meet a, a, a date and he asked us if we'd do it on our own. And we had a great night and his bird never turned up. <laughs> Shame. But 21 yeah, years is pretty good. Sorry? 21 years together. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing, really, when you think. And I always think, do you think of the Beatles was that long? But it won't. When no. you think of their success, it's a phenomenal worldwide success, mind you. Yeah. From, from, only from 62 to, to 70, really, only eight yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I mean, they've been together longer. Now, the actual the success. The first record was Love Me Do, which was 62. Yeah. So, but they. Um, but they've done a couple of years as the silver well, beat before before yeah. that they've been to germany and ringo and all that kind of thing and i'll yeah. tell you another thing uh what i've been what i've been watching is some old um footage of like american chat shows when um yeah like johnny carson and people like that and uh with ringo and um and that was a really good one the, I, I, was it johnny carson i don't think johnny carson but he had george harrison on yeah, and uh, even like George said, well, I never usually do interviews. He said, I've usually got nothing. He was really good, actually. He said, I've really got nothing to say. He said, I don't know why you've asked me on. He said, I've got nothing to say. He said, the only thing is, he said, well, I'm assuming you've asked me on because he he'd done something to finance the film, like for the the uh, Radha Krishna thing, you know, so sort of the Radha Krishna thing. So he'd done something like that, and he was plugging that. But Ringo was on the same show. You know, and the Ringo came down, and he was great. And he said, he, they went up, and him and George hugged. And Ringo said, "I think I know you, don't I?" <laughs> but, and Ringo, Ringo was Ringo was really good. I tell you what, as I think I told you before, is um, I think it's on the anthology DVDs when somebody threatened to shoot him at an American concert. I've told you this story before. No. He had a he had a, he had a death threat. I mean, you're right for time, Chris. You take what you want, mate. Yeah, he, he, had, a, he, had, he had he had a death threat at one American concert. that someone's going to shoot him, you know, it was like a twenty thousand seater arena. He said, "I always used to play with my symbols like that flat." He said, "But that night, I put them like that." He said, "I was I was going between the two. He said, "But the <laughs> funny thing was, he's like they put this in a, a copper sitting next to him." He said, "I was looking down at him. And I started giggling. He said, yeah, I was in hysterics, thinking, what's he going to do?'" He's going to do, like catch the bullet, you know. He says like a twenty thousand people. I mean, it's amazing what they went through, you know. Really incredible, really. Anyway, we said about the twenty first, twenty first. Yeah, he season. was your sixty eighty seven, um, sixty six to eighty seven. They've been that's together twenty one years. That's right. Yeah, amazing, really. Like I said, and I still remember the first official game was Walsall Town Hall, but there seems to be discrepancy about that as well. No, seventeenth of March, nineteen sixty-six, and that, that yeah, but uh, that was that was uh, Walsall Town Hall, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we always thought it was April the first, and that was the, uh, always a big thing, you know. No, you were yeah. in Newcastle. You were in Newcastle. Yeah, no, yeah, the the uh, the April the first. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, incredible. <sighs> but we'll go long back. Nobody's fall came out of the ten years. Yeah, you released. Yeah, nobody's fall. Right. And it tied in April the 1st, nobody's fall. It was a nice story. Yeah. It was 10 years. Nobody had quite the right memory. Yeah, it no. was Mar March, April I, I, time. Who was going to argue? I, don't, I can't remember actually where the April Fool's Day came from. From that? From the nobody's fall thing? Oh, that what it was. When, when, the album, when the album came out, fantastic promotion. Yeah. April the 1st of April, for April the 1st, 10 years. Yeah. Brilliant. Nobody's Fools, yeah. And then right. I, ca I came along a few years later and discovered that no, sorry, it's not, it wasn't true. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we lived on that for you, but we always lived on that. Yeah. April Fool's Day, we've yeah. always lived on well, that. I know, and, well, um, yeah. See? Actually, Nobody's Fools was my favourite album. My really? My favourite played album, yeah. yeah. It's when we did it in New York, as you know. And uh, use the record plant, what Lennon always, uh, always used, the same studio. Yeah. 
And Dennis Ferranti, the engineer, was fantastic. You know, I mean, he was more of a studio man. I mean, it was a different, a totally different pro, uh, approach for us to do that album, which I really enjoyed. It was a bit yeah. more, for a drummer, it was a bit more easy going playing, if you know what I mean. It wasn't like the, the, the sort of full on rock stuff, you know, but it was really, really easy going. And uh, that was great. And, and remember, we used the three girl singers on that as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so, yeah. The, the, the thing with the 21st anniversary was that you released um, Still the Same. Yeah. The single uh, seven inch and a 12 inch. And right. you also did the commemorative pack. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. That's got still the same on and yeah. got to go home. And then the free, the free of that one was uh, the Roaring Silence and Talk to Me About Love. Ah. Um, but these were released in February, so they didn't even cash in on the yeah. April thing, the 21st anniversary yeah, yeah, of that. Yeah, so. that's strange. Yeah. yeah but but yeah. no, they, they, it got to number 73, the single. It's weird, isn't it? I mean, I think what it was really, uh, after my old oh mind, they're, they're a bit too similar. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, they're still the same. And what yeah. was the other one? They're still the same. And there's another one, more or less the same kind of thing. And I think, I think that went against it, Chris. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I think basically, um, RCA had had enough, you know, they're sort yeah. of, um, they'd lost faith in us. I mean, that it was their idea to use John Punter for My Oh My and Run Runaway. And yeah. they basically, <coughs> sorry, they just uh, recouped their money and uh, and that was it. They wanted us out of the way. I mean, I'm just well, being uh, totally cold and honest about that. A, a, couple, of, a couple of months later in uh, April, you released um, That's What Friends Are For. Yeah. Uh, Roy Thomas Baker produced that. Yeah. Again, that's, that's an RCA thing. Yeah. Do you remember anything about that at all? Or? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we do that. I mean, that cost, it, it, the sessions with him cost an absolute fortune. Really? He used, he used the, um, well, we used the, uh, what was it called? Um, it was the big studio that we used, like a big, big old church. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I tell you what, we spent like three days on, just on drums. I mean, the, so, but you can imagine in a studio, I mean, you've got like speakers like the size of a door, you yeah. know. I mean, the, the drums sounded like thunder, you yeah. know, absolutely incredible. That's not Slade. That's no. not, but if you listen to those records, if I said to you, how long do you think we spent on that drum sound? You know, you wouldn't think we spent three days in the studio. You would, even on the big tannoys and everything. But uh, now it was, uh, I don't know, it was... Um, it was a wasted sessions with him, yeah. you know, sort of thing. It cost a well, fortune. They, they, RCA cashed in again. They released a 12 inch version of it with uh, Hio Silver Line in and a live version of Lock Up Your Daughters. Oh, that, yeah, that, the Hio Silver Line was off the Crackers album, one is. Yeah. 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 But um, so they, they're trying to get the money out of you. Yeah. That's they, it. They're just trying to make the money back, really. That was, yeah. you know. The, I, I'm yeah. going to be quick. Scott, can you make me a cup of tea, please? Uh, the, the tea bag's there already. Is there? Will you give me my blood pressure thing? Oh, yeah, just, just go, got a hand to take our blood pressure. Is the, is and, the, and, the, <laughs> my, and, and the paper. And the, my, mine's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it's, perfect. It's, it's, you? it's yeah. living with a rock star, a rock god. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I know. Yeah. My blood pressure and antidepressants, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and yet my, my blood pressure is like that of a teenager. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. that, that's good. It is, yeah. <laughs> and I keep on saying, do it again, do it again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I, mean, like, get this yeah I mean, I think, like I said, what it was, RCA basically had enough because we, we hadn't done anything for quite a while. And like, it was that idea to use a producer and a proper student. We, we were still using Portland, which is a, a pile of you know what. And of course, when we go into a proper studio, I mean, it was Ash, not Ash, it was like a rack studios where we recorded the basic tracks for uh, My Oh My Own Run Runaway. And yeah. because John Punter was signed to Air Studios, you know, owned by George Martin from the Beatles and two other guys, like one who did the Hollies and one, yeah, they had a company together with Air Studios. 
by the part of the deal we had to use their studio which cost a bloody arm and a leg you know but i mean they were proper studios i mean you, you go into those plays you know okay they've gone now but at the time in the 80s i mean they were just it was like going into nasa space station yeah. it was just, just incredible especially the one in oxford circus where the big studio, air studios were started there was three studios there three big studios and uh, one was always closed down being updated that that's how good they were you know so they were always updating and they, they cost like nearly 200 quid an hour chris that you know, was then that was then and mccartney had his favorite studio there booked 24 hours a day 365 days of the year, paid in advance in case he wanted to go in. <laughs> he was there the one time, he was doing that album, Give My Regards to Broad Street, while we were there. And yeah. they got like a, a canteen area. He was forever on the Space Invaders. You know, you, you know that shows him, Paul, and run in, do something, then he'd be out again in 10 minutes, back on the Space Invaders. <laughs> but anyway, that was it. That's a tale. That's a good one, yeah. that one. You then um, they released it again in April the actual album. You boys made big noise. Yeah, and you had um, Jim we uh, produced some of it. Roy Thomas oh, Baker yeah. and John and John Punter. How did that feel yeah. for you? That was okay. Yeah. It was just like I mean, John Punter. Uh, he taught us a lot, really, John. Did I will say that. And Roy Thomas Baker, like I said, he cost an arm and a leg. Fantastic sound in the studio. But it wasn't really Slade. I mean, Slade ain't, ain't like thunderous drums and things like that. You know, it's no. more of a, a collective thing. But it cost a fortune. It was actually the tea lady at um, the uh, Essex, Wessex Studios, where it wrote on Baker's work. It was the tea lady who, who actually coined the phrase, you boys make big noise. She actually said it when we was in the yeah. country and had a cup of tea once and the playback was going on. She said that. Blimey, you boys make big noise, and that's where the title came from, from the tea lady. Because the, they released you boys, they released the single "You Boys Made Big yeah. Noise," twelve inch and seven inch, but it was on um, Cheapskate. Well, I, yeah, I don't. Know. Was that was that after the RCA thing had finished? Yeah, yeah. the RCA yeah. album came out, um, and then in in um, April, then in July, the single came out. And as I say, it's on um, it's on Cheapskate. Was it because they were the? Not, well, I think I've got to be quite honest because maybe we couldn't get a look in anywhere. No, they're the ones. Maybe, done, not. Uh, maybe Jim, nobody wanted Jim did us. The, yeah, Jim did the production on the single uh, that one, and you milked it on the twelve inch. You put the twelve inch out. You got right. uh, a remix, an instrumental version, and a USA mix. All the oh, same okay. song. That's weird. I don't know. But yeah. I think what it was then, no label particularly wanted this, Chris. No. Again, the, yeah. That's that's age. On, on, yeah. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Like this. Um, that's it, really, for 87. Did you, were, were, were there any talk at all of gigging or anything like that? I'm trying to think. Did, we, we didn't gig at all, did we? No, not at all. No, 21st no, anniversary. Yeah, and it's anybody weird. else? It's weird. It, was, it, would have been perfect. it would have been the perfect thing, wouldn't yeah. it? So uh, I really, I really the, don't I mean, know, mate. You had the quote, the quote or two on the twenty-third anniversary, whatever oh, anybody knows. They, 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 they never stopped. I mean, this was unbelievable because I've, I've been to see him a few times on that too. was over here yeah. and back in, back in England, you know, sort of thing. And uh, it's just an automatic thing with them. They just go out. At least yeah. a couple of times a year, you yeah. Know, sort of thing. They um, go do all over Europe as well, you know. And uh, yeah, they sort of they've never stopped. They really have never stopped. It's we, like when the, the very first tour in Australia, you know, we did with them, the '73. Yeah, yeah. They went back every year for about 10, 12 years. After that, yeah. we only yeah. went back at another '74, yeah. and that was it. Actually, it, it, this the. We've, we've, we've spoken about this before. There were some weird decisions made, weren't there, with, yeah. with you yeah. compared to other groups and yeah. stuff. And just, you think, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I really don't, I, 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 I can't remember exactly what went on, but no, nothing was happening really. I mean, we went back to Australia in 74, but it was a bit of a, 
a bit of a nothing tour really. Yeah. And um, yeah, we should have we should have milked a seventy three one. We were the biggest thing in Australia since yeah. the Beatles, you know. I mean, yeah. um, Slay Live out, Soul Sergeant Pepper. You know, I mean, just phenomenal. Yeah. You know, we never milked it. It was just unbelievable. No, it's um, it's all it's all great with hindsight, but the, you look back and you think there's some strange decisions there. Yeah. You know, sort of, yeah. Compare uh, compare them to other bands. I mean, yeah, I know. A, a, lot, a lot of weird things went on, but um, you know, sort of a lot of time we weren't really asked or anything like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not going to start blaming people. No, no. But, um, you know, no. it's uh, really just much. We we were we were as just as much to blame. You know, sort of by not putting our foot down or not no. sort of saying this is what we want to do, sort of thing. You know, well, you, you're all just young boys from just young boys in the black country, that's all you yeah. were. Yeah, well, we just having a great time. I mean, we're having a great time anyway, but it was just sort of uh, to our detriment, really, by not sort of concentrating more on the road, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's like, look, it's like look, I remember. Look, look at the life you're living now yeah, oh, fantastic. well it's great and uh, and like with the recording you know i mean we, i'll record over here and the, the guys record in england and we put it together how how things have changed eh? yeah yeah you know. well that's the end of 87 88 was pretty much the even less no yeah. two in again and you released one single and that wasn't even uh, what was that one chris let's dance Chris Montez. Oh, that, I think uh, I think we're at a loose end there. I don't think we, we haven't got anything to do, if you know what I'm saying. And oh, be, be, before we do that, I've got to mention you did at the end of '86. Uh, you we won't <laughs> we won't give in. That was released yeah. as well. Um, well that was another one. Sorry about but, that. Like the same kind of thing. Cheap like, uh, again. Sorry on cheap skate again. Yeah, so. it was uh, the same again. What I mean, it wasn't. It was a bit of an easy song, you know, a bit of yeah. an easy thing, you know. I mean, yeah. I think we're still trying to um, go in, in the footsteps of my own my and things like that, you know. Yeah. Sort of, the, yeah. the big, the big, big sound. You, yeah, yeah back to '88. No touring, no mention of touring in '88. I don't suppose. No, I can't, I can't really look back. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I can't really, I don't really know why we didn't tour. Maybe well, we. Maybe we felt we hadn't got anything to tour with, you know, we've just mm -hmm. gone over the same ground, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, no, it wasn't, the, no, it wasn't keen to promote or anything like that, no, you know. No, so, no, no, it wasn't keen, was he? No, I mean, there was that as well. I mean, he was having a bit of trouble personally, and we just yeah. all um, sort of went along with him, you know, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know, so, but now you release uh, Let's Dance by the, the, the mighty Chris Montez. Yeah. I think. But was yeah. that on the cracker? Was that on the crackers album? Chris? Good question. I should know it, but I can't remember. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 probably I, was. Probably yeah. was. Maybe um, that's why then. Standing on the corner on the B side. Um, okay, that's one. Of, that's, a, that's that's one of my favourite tracks as well. Standing on the corner. Yeah, from from the Nobody's Fools album. Yeah. No, sorry, from the uh, Slade in Flame album. Yeah. Stand. Yeah. This is um. I'm trying to think what you're just saying. No, it's just not standing on the cross. So it was just released as a B side. Okay. But the only the only sort of I'll just put this back in its sleeve. The only thing that was different, which was quite nice for the collectors, was the C D version of it. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that either. Well it gets better. The C D version was a three inch version. Oh, I've never I've never seen that. You had to use an adapter. <laughs> there you are. This is I've, like, I've no, 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 this is one I made I earlier. Play it, so you could play it. So you could play it. Because you know that that won't play. You stick that in your CD and it won't to, play. I, I, I don't know anything about that one, mate. Well, I'm glad of that. That's something. Yeah. Um, so there's somebody went to the trouble of doing all this. And it's so easy. I'm just off flipping blue feet here trying to get, get it back yeah. on. Um, but you had a, a special adapter that made it big enough to fit no, in the CD player. I, 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 never, I never knew about that, mate. Well, another collector's item there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. And that is literally it for those yeah, two I mean, years. It was, it was in the in the sort of the no man's land period, wasn't it all that? Yeah. I mean, sort of, uh, was that the time 
when we was doing all the Baileys clubs as well, with your Baileys Watford, Baileys Leicester, and Baileys up north somewhere, Sunderland or Scunthorpe or something like that. But in the 70, 70, 78, 79 sort of period. So I thought it was around then. It mm. might have been a bit before, but uh, mm. it was around around the, the nothing period. But at least yeah. you were still, you were gigging then. I mean, 10 well, years that's, later. I would have to wait, Chas, but it, you know, I mean, the, you know, it was funny sort of um, setting the gear up, you know, on the on the Sunday night, for, and, and then it, it, it stayed set up for the week, you know. Yeah. Well, I remember, yeah. especially Watford, uh, Willie, Willie Wright, who used to look after my drums in those days, you know, Roddy Willie Wright. Um, yeah. He was staying at my place at the time, and then we'd use my car, we'd pick Nod up from Chelsea, then we'd drive to Watford, do the gig, and then um, we'd drive back, drop Nod off at, in, at his place, and then we'd go to a drinking place till six o'clock in the morning, me and Willie, you know, sort of thing. And, uh, yeah. No, but for those years, 87 and 88, um, they, they were just nothing years for you. Did, did you consider yourself still a group? Uh, were you still Slade, yeah. though, in spite of not yeah, much happening? Were, were you still there, phoning there, each there, other? Yeah, there was, no, there was no, uh, no inkling then about anything. We were still in a band. I mean, um, sort of... Uh, was it? Uh, Nod was still living in, in Chelsea then. Right. Uh, and and uh, me and him used to meet uh, quite a bit and have a, he'd go for a drink. He always used to call me up and say, drink a spirals. That was the wine bar. We're all from where I live. And right. we'd be there until four o'clock in the morning, you know, sort of. Uh, sometimes Ozzy, had, well, me and Ozzy used to drink down lunch times, you know, sort of thing. But uh, do you want to talk about Ozzy? Tell, yeah. tell us a tale. That you've not put in your book. So I, I, don't, I don't know whether I can. I don't have a title one about the dress. Nobody nobody listens, nobody watches these, don't you? Just say what you want. You just... Okay, now that I think I told you that time, well, we always used to meet, it used to meet about half past ten at the wine bar because they'd be there. Morning in, or afternoon? What, morning, in the morning. Because um, they'd be there, you know, getting ready to open for the lunchtime sessions, like um, Murray, the chef. He'd be in there preparing for the lunchtime, so he should let me and Ozzy in, you know. And he would say, just help yourself and just mark down what you've had. We never ripped Arthur, was the owner. We never ripped Arthur off. I mean, we'd sort of, we'd be having quadruple vodkas and God knows what, but we always marked him, we always paid him, and what this wasn't that. Anyway, I think I told you the one time, um, we always used to be like that, and I went up, I used to panic. If I woke up a bit late and I couldn't get to the wine bar by half past ten, I used to panic. <laughs> it's only, only about a five minute walk from where I lived then. Anyway, I was in there the one time and uh, no was it's about one o'clock, no was he? I said, and Arthur, the other said, You'd be strange, you ain't here yet. And I said, Yeah, anyway, I carried on drinking. Then Arthur came, he faced me at the bar and he was like pointing towards the door. And I looked around and Ozzy was standing there in a dress. Right. I don't know whether this is in the book. I don't know. I can't remember whether this is in the book. He's standing there in a dress, and I'm starting to bite my lip, you know, sort of thing. Uh, and, he, you know, and I've got my head down. He came, and I came walking towards me. I've got to swear here because it's Aussie, right? I've got to swear here, Chris, right? I don't want to be. And, uh, and I, I got my head down. I said, You all right, Oz? He said, My wife's got two cunts, and I'm one of them. And uh, <laughs> it turned out, turned out he'd locked it. She'd locked his clothes away so it wouldn't come out. So I put one of her dresses on to come out. <laughs> and, Brilliant. And oh yeah, the one time uh, was there. Um, we drink it, and I, I really, I'd had enough. Which we, we, we must have had a lot. I'd had enough. <laughs> it's about three o'clock. It was after three. That was about four o'clock. And I said. Uh, I've got to go home. I've, I've got to go. I'll just, just the one said, I've got to go home. I said, no, no, he's left and I'm blind. I said, I've got to go home. I'll, I'll see you later on. I'll come. I'll be back about seven or whatever. Anyway, I went back home. It's only around the corner. I had a couple of hours sleep. Got had a, had a show. Went back at the wine bar. Now, next to the wine bar was a butcher's shop. And they were putting a, a new window in, a new front window in. Right? And I, I, I stepped over. I never thought about it. I stepped over the guys, walked in. And Arthur was standing behind the bar with a smile on his face. He said, you see next door? And I said, I got to, what happened? He said, well, when you left, because Ozzy used to drink, have a pint glass, 
with the quadruple of everything from the optics in the point glass. That's how you should, like you have a quadruple gin, rum, vodka, whatever, in the point glass all together. And uh, anyway, I, I said, what happened? He said, well, when you left, you wanted to carry on drinking and I wanted to go around the same as you, have a little sleep before tonight. And I had to kick him out. So, uh, you know, literally forcibly kick him out. And he got his driver to pick him up, Pete. Uh, he helped us a lot of the times, Pete did. And apparently, Ozzy got a house brick to throw through the wine bar window, missed and went through the butcher's shop. <laughs> they, 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 they never ever found out who it was. And, uh, and, and the one time, the same again, we was in the wine bar, it was about four o'clock, and Arthur said, listen guys, will you clear off? He says, I want to go and have a sleep and have a shower. He says, you can buy whatever you want to, but please, F off, you know, go. Yeah. And then uh, Ozzy says, uh, oh, we'll go back to the house drinking. And I looked at Pete, his driver was there, and I said, is this a good idea? Pete went, no. I said, is, is Sharon in? He went, yes. I said, uh, he said, oh, no, F, 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 you're right. I, we're just buy, we've got about a dozen bottles, of, you know, bottles of wine or whatever to take back. He only, he only lived a couple of yards away, like that way. So anyway, we walked across and I never thought anything of it. We got on the driveway, got my head down, and Ozzy shouts, run! And I look up and Sharon's out the window with a shotgun, right? <laughs> the bottles go in the air, right? And we're running down the drive. Now at the bottom, they just had a brand new delivery of a top of the range BMW. They just got out the gate and she fight, lets the gun go, right? And just peppers the side of this brand new car, you know, and I was just swearing and, and he runs that up and we can hear him beating her up upstairs where he's in the bedroom and I, I could hear her scream and I went home. <laughs> and that was a daily occurrence. <laughs> but I will say one thing, I will say one thing, if it weren't for her, I think he'd have been dead a long time ago. Well, really, yeah. Oh, there's I one time I was I was at a barbecue and he was there, and there was me and Nod as well. Uh, Ozzy, Ozzy was at the at the barbecue with an apron on, and the chef sat, and we were me and I was just drinking, and looks so I was just, hey, and they said, they said heavy metal. <laughs> he got the, the chef sat on all the apron. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's the funniest bloke I've ever known. But he doesn't realise what he's saying, Chris. But he's the funniest bloke. I mean, I think, you know, the story we used to go to AA together. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. We, to, it was, we were just like two little kids at school. We'd be sitting in the back of the class giggling. We've got our head with that people. I don't know if you've ever experienced uh, an AA meeting. No, Chris, yeah. no. No, I mean, no, I don't mean because of that. I mean just in, in, in with a job when you've been, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. been in attendance at one. Yeah. No, but I mean, what they normally do is they, they ask somebody to get up when you know with, with, to talk about their their experience or the, the their problem yeah, yeah. basically. And you should get this guy get up every every week we go there and he he'd be rambling on about he'd be he'd be he'd be drunk anyway when uh, when he was getting up. And me and I, me and Ozzy were sitting at the back like two little kids in the back of the class giggling, you know. I mean. I think they're about an hour session, something like that. Anyway, we walk out of there, we look at you and go, fancy a drink? Oh, straight, 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 straight in the bar, you know, a total waste of time, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but he, he is one of the funniest blogs, you know, you know, and, you know really, you know, you, when you say, when you watch that Osborne's program, that's just to him, there's no acting there. there. Is. Just, I mean, you're actually, you're actually, when you're out with him, you're actually, your stomach is aching with laughter when you're with him, you know, sort of thing. That's brummies for you, mate. Yeah, I know. But got... I'm, I'm just, I'm just, when we go to an Iron Maiden concert, you know, it, it, with both of us, it, it, but he'd been arranged, he was going to get up and sing Paranoid, the old Black Sabbath. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Classic. And, he, and uh, anyway, we're in the wine bar, Sabbath again, and he wants you to go to a fancy dress place in, in, in you know, before, before we got the concert. You know, I said, okay, let me drinking. It comes about four o'clock or something like that. I said, Ozzy, I said, we better go. He said, if you want to get something fancy dress, you know, I said, we better go now, otherwise it'll be closed. So we get a cab into the West End, find a fancy dress place. He starts to put pull the pink Texas jeans off. He starts to pull the pink tights on. You know, he puts like a little ballerina's tutu on, the thing like that. He said, yeah. what do you think, Don? I said, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. And then, then he puts a Nazi helmet on. 
and I'll say, well, now you look silly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but as a, as, a, as a joke, Chris, you got like the ballerinas all the time. I said, I'll tell you what, it was, it was getting on, it was like rush hour then. I said, I'll tell you what, Oz, it might be quicker if we go on the bus to Hammersmith. <laughs> and he he went for it. He said, "Yeah, great idea." I thought, oh, "Shit!" Anyway, we're on the bus, and he's standing there, holding on to the thing with the pin two to one and everything. Everybody's giving him a wide berth. He's just standing <laughs> there. I'm going to carry the world. We got to Hammersmith. We're in the bar at Hammersmith, and there's a big uh, people standing, keeping away from him while you've got the you know, ballerinas outfit on. Anyway, he sort of, uh, he goes on stage and the place just goes mental. It just goes, it's just unbelievable, you know, what happened. And this is way before the Osborne's programme, you yeah. know, years before that. And uh, anyway, we got split up. I don't know what happened. And, uh, and I called a cab bomb. I don't know what happened. Then I called him the next day. I said, oh, are you okay? He said, yeah. He said, what happened? I said, I don't know what happened to you. So I, I got a cab bomb. I didn't know where you were. So he said, uh, I said, how did you get on? He went, F knows. <laughs> but he got his ballerina's outfit on, so I've got no idea, I, you know, how he went on, how he got on. Brilliant. Well, I he's, think... He's, on one that... of the funniest, he's one of the funniest blokes to be with, I tell you. Well, well, I think on that note of rock and roll debauchery, I'll switch the record button off, and I'll see you the other side for a couple of minutes, if that's OK. I'll just wait here, then. Yeah, yeah, thanks for yeah, that, mate. Okay. Really yeah. good. I enjoyed yeah. that. <laughs>